You think about history, you think about archaeology, you think about um, all the great uh, civilizations on earth. If you want to learn about the people, you dig and dig and you dig up their art, you dig up their, their frescas, their, their murals, their pottery. You dig up what was left behind by the people who created the history through art. West Virginia has some of the best storytellers. Some people can talk the story, some have to write the story, sing the story, I paint the story. I want people who look at my painting, I want you when you stand before it, I want you to be, I want you to be a part of it. I don't want you to be standing off. When you stand before one of my paintings, I want you to feel as though you're in that room, you're in that spot with me. Being a storyteller, uh, I feel like I become, uh, I become a part of your life right now and, and you become a part of my life because we share that moment. I've found that uh, things have happened better for me since I've moved to West Virginia. I think a lot of it has to do with the character of the culture. All of the people are willing to share business tips and, and techniques where that's applicable. Uh, it's a very sharing community of people. It's great to be an artist right now in West Virginia because I do feel like there's so much room to grow and um, that kind of climate is great for new people to come into West Virginia and to try new things in the arts. Um, I think that there's a great opportunity for young people to relocate here and start something. We started just in our back studio um, where people would come for just art walk nights. We would throw up a one night show and it would be performance art or a group show or an installation. Um, something you typically wouldn't see in Charleston. Things that we sell here we have to lower our prices on to sell in, in this town and you know, the state, whereas if I wanted to sell my artwork you know, in New York, I have people there that buy things that tell me that it's way underpriced, but if I even want to try to sell something here, I have to keep it a pretty base layer. It's, it's hard to be an artist, and um, just in general, not even only in West Virginia, but in general. You have to figure out where you fit in the state and where your work fits in the state or if it doesn't fit in the state if you have to get out in different avenues. So that's been the biggest challenge is just trying to figure out where, where my pots fit. Our communities are shifting now from um, things the way things were. You know, in the 70s, the arts and crafts movement was so huge here, and people bought handmade. Um, so now it's a little bit different. You know, our economy is struggling, but um, there's always going to be the need for creative people in our economy. A lot of people don't realize that in West Virginia, 85% of the businesses out there employ five people or less. And this includes a lot of uh, art studios as well as, as uh, viable production businesses and, and homespun cottage industries. You're looking at hardworking people who don't give up, who have creative abilities, and they provide a product unlike anything else. You have something there that is uh, a part of a person's very being. You know, we see across the country that creative economies are, are the economies that are thriving. The service and arts-based communities are the ones that people gravitate towards. So as we look around the state and try to find different ways to grow our own communities, uh, I think it's very important that we keep the focus on arts because the culture and the heritage of a town is the heartbeat of that town. And that's the energy that draws people to it. If this society ever crumbles, you're going to dig into the earth and find pieces of glass that were blown. You're going to find pictures that were created, carvings. You're going to find what was dear to the heart of the people of that era.